Welcome back to Sip the Tally Films, and I'm your host, Coach Evans. And before we even get started on today's video, I want to give a shout out to all the Patreon members from the newest member down to our long standing members. First off, we'll start off with D Boulder, Agnes, Osmond, Kevin Bonham, Roy Hardy, Chris, Swank, Fares, Paul Brown, Bill Seals, Vaughn, Rob L., Wayne Whitley, Michael Crawford, Lance Reed, DDSQ, Living Legend. OTR Mike, Yolanda B, Will G, Tyrone Tyrone, Sippy Special 662, Ace of Southern, uh, Buck, Hendo, uh, D Weezy, Josh Hoffman, LBHT Crew, Chris Armin, Mo, Alex Pulianis, Jason Ism, Brandon Bazell, and Martin Van Beers. I appreciate you guys for being a member of the Patreon. And if you want to be a Patreon member also, go to patreon.com backslash sip the tally and you can join. Let's get started on today's show. All right, and as you can see, today's episode is called Todd Munkin Speaks. And he was on a podcast, and I think it's called An Arkansas Podcast. And these guys seem to be affiliated with the University of Arkansas Sports. Not just football, but I think with all kind of things that have to do with the University of Arkansas Sports. And they got Todd Munkin to come on. And they talked about his journey from, from the different college stops he was at to the Cleveland Browns to the Bucks, and now with the Ravens. So they just kind of went through... A, a plethora of his, his resume and different little stories, the tidbits that, that went into it. But um, before I even get into the Ravens part of it, if you don't know me personally, and I always speak, you know, on all corn in my HBCU, but my under my BS is from Southern Mississippi. And Todd Munkin was once the head coach at Southern Mississippi. And he spoke very highly of his time at Southern Mississippi. I really enjoyed, you know, listening to him talk about how much uh, fun and how well run it was at Southern Mississippi and how if he just took care of his part, like doing what the administration asked him to do as far as the discipline part, they would give him anything within their power to try to win games. Like he, he told a story about like he found a loophole where he was able to buy all of his senior suits and that was like the first suit that many of them owned. And the, the, the pride and the joy that those guys um, got from getting a tailor-made suit for them. And just little things like that just really, you know, made me feel good about how he talked about, you know, Southern Mississippi. And, you know, a lot of stuff has been negative about Southern Mississippi in the past. Well, not in the past, recently because of Brent Favre and all that little stuff has went on. But to hear Todd speak highly of Southern Mississippi, the school that I attended, it really made me feel good. So let's kind of get into the Ravens aspect of what Todd talked about. Uh, one of the hosts asked him about him always basically finding defensive-oriented coaches, where recently finding defensive-oriented coaches and, you know, going in there as an offensive coordinator. And is that a deterrent? Is that something he looks for? And he talked about a difference in philosophy. And let's see what he said about why he, he doesn't mind or why he don't mind uh, going into a team that has a defensive head coach that kind of, ha kind of has a defensive or a different philosophy than most guys. Well, first of all, not only defensive head coaches, but where they've been elite on defense. Not only they're, elite, they're, they're defensive head coaches, but they're elite on defense. So, you know, what I do appreciate about that is you're going to structure things from a physical standpoint. To me, that's where it starts. Like, Everything is going to start from a physicality, um, and I still think physicality wins. You can't control the game if you can't run it. You just can't. Then you can't win. But you can. You may not have to control the game, but you can't control the game because short yardage, four minute coming out, you know, goal line. You're still at some point going to have to force the defense's hand um, from a physicality. So you're always going to have that part of it. Um, I don't mind them. And I think that there's a different perspective from a defensive coach's perspective is how to win the game. And and hearing that, it's really like you get a defensive coach's perspective. You get that physicality from your your, your defensive guys that translate to your offensive line. And you got to be able to run the ball. Those defensive coaches going to mandate that you be able to run the ball. And if you can run the ball and you got a GM that buys into that philosophy, you're going to be able to run the ball. It's a lot easier to call plays. 
because that makes it a lot easier for you to call pass plays. Your play action works. You you if you can just hand the ball off, I'm telling you, it's a lot easier at every level to call plays if you can hand the ball off and move people. If your big five or your big six up front can move people and you can give it to a running back and let him do his thing, it's a lot easier on your mental aspect to call plays rather than if you got to sit back there and and five wide and four wide and throw it around the yard. Because a lot more, a lot worse things can happen when you throw that ball around than you just hand it off to the running back. So it makes it a lot easy. Second thing I want to talk about is the role of I won't want to say secondary coaches because it sounds demeaning, but that's just the role of offensive coordinators and position coaches. He talked about like what his role was as a offensive coordinator and then what the role of position coaches are. And then I'll, I'll give you my two cents on how it applies to the Ravens once you hear what he has to say. Let's get into it. It's really about winning the game. And listen, I, I'm not paid to win. I'm paid to score. Like, if we'd have won every game this year 7-6 to six, and won the Super Bowl, he still would have fired me. <laughs> if we'd have won every game 41-40, Mike McDonald would not be at Seattle. He'd have been fired. Like, we're position coaches are paid to develop their players, not to score or win. They'll get fired faster if their guys don't play well. Coordinators have to score. And then the head coach has to win. That's It goes in that order. It's, you know, So, at the end of the day, it's... The perspective, a lot of times, from a defensive side of it, is what do we have to do to win the game? Not that offensive coaches don't have that, but right. there's also a part of that. And listen, I'd much prefer to win a game scoring. You know, I mean, there's no doubt for what you're responsible for. Now, and, and this still kind of relates to the first point they talked about perspective also. But let's talk about the different roles. As a position coach, he said your role is to develop the players. And so... I don't know if you know how new or, or how new you've been here on the channel. I've mentioned I've recently put out a thing about is developing development happening with the offensive line. So this is kind of the stuff I was talking about with you know our offensive line. Are those guys developing enough? Are they developing enough to show growth? This is going to be a big year to see if Ben Cleveland can handle the NFL load. You know, and I know Voorhees is new, and he's probably right now trending towards starting at left guard. You know, with a year of practice and learning and meetings and whatnot. Well, not a year of practice because he was hurt, so let, let me pull that back. But a year of learning and meetings, can he apply what he learned in meetings and whatnot, and can he develop? Did Salah get any better? Did, did Linderbaum get any better? Like, we're going to see if the O-line developed. Even though some of those guys didn't play, we saw what Salah looked like in the preseason. He looked bad. We saw a few snaps with, with Cleveland and, you know, I think two games were for Cleveland. Did, did he get any better at his deficiencies? We about to see if our O-line developed. And if they didn't develop, Ty Munkin just gave you the blueprint. The, the, the position coaches that are not coordinators, if they guys not developing, they got to go. Our receivers developing. If our receivers ain't developing, they got to go. Because you can't. it's not a two-fold no more. Keith's gone. It's on one person. It's on one person. They're not developing. Adios. Let's get out of So position coaches got to develop. Then you talk about the role of the OC. His job as OC is to score points. The DC's job is to stop him from scoring points. His job ain't to develop the players. His job is to put them in the best position to score points. To get points on the board. That's that's what his job is to do. It ain't it ain't to 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 teach a guy how to run a route. It ain't to teach a guy how to throw a spiral. It ain't to head place on a certain technique. It's to call plays to get them in the end zone. Now, if you can lend your your expertise to the player or the the position coach that will help them do that, yeah, you do that. And any coach with common sense knows if you if you do that, that's gonna help your job be easier. So not to say you you don't hold that information in because you'd be stupid to do that. But that's technically that's not your job. Technically, that's not your job, because because some position coaches consider that as stepping on their toes too. Some do. The 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 immature ones with the egos do. But any anything that can help the player get better, which is gonna make the coaches look good, that's what the coaches should do. But we got one final point that we're gonna look at, and this final point is really 
it's an interesting story, but it's so, so true. And it comes from um, a conversation that Ty Munkin had with Fitz Magic. Fitz Magic. Uh, he's the, he go, he's on the prime Thursday night football on what? Prime video or whatever. And we know he was the quarterback of 1900 different teams. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick. And it's an interesting story that Ty Munkin told about Ryan Fitzpatrick. Let's, let's, let's hear it. You're trying to decide, well, I'm going to leave George and I'm going to go do this. Well, there's a lot of reward for that. So, no, I'll tell you another funny story. So Ryan Fitzpatrick, quarterback, I had Fitz, I had him at Tampa. I call him, I'm like, what are you thinking? Like, what do you think about going to Tampa, going to Baltimore? You know, be the coordinator. He goes, all right, three things are going to happen. One of three are going to happen, okay? One, you're not going to get Lamar back. Well, you'll get draft picks and you'll get some other quarterback and you'll do great and you'll get a bunch of credit for it. I said, okay, I like that. He goes, you'll get Lamar back and you'll kill it and you'll get credit for it, okay? Or you'll get Lamar back and you'll suck and you'll get fired. <laughs> I said, okay. I appreciate Fitz for the three things of what could happen. I said, all right, sounds like a plan. Let's go do it, you know? And <laughs> Man, Fitz, Fitzpatrick a comedian, but but that it's so true. Like in that situation, when he's thinking about picking up that job and this is when, you know, this is after Greg Roman is fired and he's, you know, thinking about putting his name in the hat. Um, he called up Fitzpatrick and asked him for advice. For whatever reason, he reached out to Fitzpatrick. Who knows? But it, those three things are true. One, you can not get Lamar back, and he can he would have gotten picked up by some other team, and you would have got two first and probably got a quarterback, a young quarterback. You know, you would have gotten C.J. Stroud or A.R. or Bryce Young out of that deal. Some way, somewhere around there, you would have got a young quarterback. And, you know, who if you would have killed it, who knows? The second thing, which actually happened, you got Lamar back, and he killed it, won the MVP. Almost should have been unanimously again. That's what happened. You so you that the second part happened, and then the third option was you got it back and you stunk, but but that didn't happen. So that's funny. That was a funny way to to end this this episode of Sip the Tally Films, and and I just think like there were a lot of things that he said in this interview. I think these were the the, the three most important things to me. Um, some of the stuff was. It is what it is, but to me, this is the things that I pulled out of this interview. And what you saw in this interview was kind of what I saw. I don't know how many years ago it is, but I've told this story a couple of times on the, the roundup. I had a chance to meet Coach Munkin, and I can't remember how long ago it was, but he was when he was a receivers coach at LSU. They were recruiting um, this, this kid out of Ocean Springs, Mississippi. He was a tall a wide receiver. He ended up going to Southern Miss. Uh, he didn't go to LSU. He ended up going to Southern Miss. But um, I was in the back of the room. That kid was in the back of the room, and he was having position meetings with his his guys. And so when uh, they finished their position meeting, he took some time and met with the recruit, and they talked for 15, 20 minutes or whatever. And I still was in the back of the room just listening but not really in their conversation too much because I, our whole staff was there, and I was a receiver coach at the time. So I was just – Minding my business, but not minding my business, trying not to be in the way. And so when he got through doing his deal with his with his players and then the recruit, he, you know, he he took a, probably about an hour out of his time to answer questions, to draw stuff up, and, you know, just talk football with me. And then so when that time was up, he was like, anything you want from me. So I was like, Coach, if you could, you know, put some of this stuff on film, or if you got any practice stuff or whatever, you could send me. I take it so I can study because at the time I'm a young coach. And I always ask that question when I meet, meet coaches and, not, a lot of times that never happens because it's just kind of like a formality. You that you 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 say that and they say they're gonna send it and they don't. But I, I gave my road address down and you know probably about a month and a half later I got a package with about seven discs in it. And this time this is when you know CDs were still prevalent <laughs> and it came to the house. And so for that I'll ever be you know thankful for for Coach Munkin for that because he's one of two coaches that I've ever sent stuff that said they were gonna do it. And ironically both coaches were at LSU at the time. So, shout out to Coach Munkin for that. And uh, this is all I got for you, man. I appreciate, again, all the Patreons that I named at the top of the show. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, share, uh, share, share, share. We are close to 10K. The next milestone uh, for the channel is 10K. So, if you like the video, you really like it, hit the subscribe button. Uh, grab a link to it. Share it on your socials, uh, everywhere on your socials. And uh, I'll see y'all soon, man. Peace and love, and I appreciate y'all.